the maniac of Gadara, or the man of Gadara, the brother at Gadara. Um, this is part two. This is um, a synopsis of my, uh, or a, a summary of the parentheses I've done on Luke and Matthew. So I'm, I've saved Mark. This is the third book of the gospel of the gospels speaking about the man that was possessed with legions now i've covered some detail about about the man's affliction or or my thoughts on the man's affliction i can't i can't be certain and i'm going to look at a bit more of that in depth now some's going to be just um speculation at best it's uh, just considering the the facts so some are facts, some is my, my thoughts and speculation. So I like to invite anybody to not trust what I say, but trust the Holy Spirit, trust the Word of God, and but consider the things I say and uh, examine them and uh, allow the uh, Lord to lead you. And I pray that this is a, a blessing to someone, a holy kiss and a, a comfort and a verification. Uh, I'm going to give a brief share a brief understanding what I've learned about the four Gospels um, and, and a bit about the context which is which is important to understand I think because Matthew Mark Luke and John primarily are the Lord's ministry to Israel and I think that's a very important point and there's a legal point in the scriptures where a Gentile woman come to the Lord for healing and she had to knock on the door a few times because the Lord was not focused on the Gentiles at this time. His priority, the order of his his will, was to get the gospel. And because he was a Jew, he was a promised seed, so it was for the Jews of that time. It was the Gentile, the um, gospel of Jesus Christ didn't come for the Gentiles until after... Um, Christ's resurrection and Pentecost and the, and the, and and then the uh, gospel focus changed it there was a sort of a half in half out but it was sort of like leaving the old behind resolving trying to you know finish it off and then it was the door was opening to the Gentiles and the gospel flooded the Gentile nations and had free course around the earth as as history shows and um, so that's an important Thing to understand that the four books Matthew Mark Luke and John are witness accounts of the Lord's ministry the Lord Hebrew ministry to the Hebrew people the Hebrew seed before the Gentiles now I know the Lord healed um, Gentiles and um, half Jews and half Gentiles from Samaria but his focus was I don't. I really can't see in the scriptures that the Lord's going to go outside His bounds. It was completely. I'm not saying He wasn't healing Gentiles, but His primary order order of events was the Jews, the Jews and the Gentiles. So I'm going to be looking at the the identity of this man. Now I can't 100% say was this man a Jew or was this man a Gentile. It to me it it, it could fit both ways. With, with with the information we've got. I've done some history and around the time of Christ's time and even before the um, now there's Decapolis which is a region of ten um, ten provinces, ten cities or ten districts occupied by um, now the I think Jerusalem no, no, don't hold me to this, but I think that region was conquered in 60 something, 63 BC. And the jurisdiction of those districts were Roman governed. They were dominant, predominantly Roman uh, culture, pagan worship and a mixture. We see from the accounts that the Lord, there were swine there. So they were now, now you could speculate that they they were Jews, um, uh, rebellious Jews, you know, um, disobedient to the law, and or they could have 
you know the prop the land and uh, and the uh livestock could have been owned by the jews but it, they could have had <coughs> excuse me gentiles working on their behalf to keep to profit from these things but from history you know it was a wealthy thriving metropolis and there was uh, pagan temples uh, pagan worship and these provinces spread from i believe syria and Jordan and uh, parts of the Golan Heights so there was quite a borough of districts and so I can't I can't picture in my mind how that would look on the ground I've not been to that part of the world but it is a very it's a very rich study if you study the um, the history of those events uh, and the accounts that you could uh, seek out and find um, so the Gospels were primarily to the to the Jewish people. So we're at a time where we're in the Lord's ministry. It's the the focus is on getting the gospel, getting the the kingdom preached to the uh, to the um, the Jewish people, and uh, it starts with. Um, I'm going to read the scriptures and um, talk through. My, my thoughts and uh, a summary of, of the overall uh, account. So we're in um, Mark chapter 5 and it's, I'm going to read verse 1 uh, to 21 I believe. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. Forgive me for my pronunciation. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the, to among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, crying, and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, what, I, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I enjoy thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now, where, now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit, Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and have had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. So that's the complete account of, of, of that particular uh, demon-possessed man, that uh, man possessed with legions. Now, there's some fascinating things I've, uh, I've considered. And like, like the scriptures, you read, you, the more you read them, the, the deeper they become, and I don't believe there's 
a bottom to the depth of studying the scriptures. I think you know, they're just deep pools of living water. Um, just I'm going to look at some, go through the scriptures over what we've read and uh, cover some details. So we know that if we look at the context before, the, the night before was where Jesus were, um, was seen on the water. So this is the, uh, and, and the disciple uh, Peter desired to come out, and, out and to meet the Lord on the water and walk on the water. And that's the account where Peter panicked and had fear and he began to, to sink and cried out for the Lord to save him. And the Lord stretched forth his hand and rebuked Peter for his doubt and lack of faith and had to rescue him and put him on his feet. So we had that incredible experience. So I believe it's the time just after that event, the morning after. So they're, they're taking their boat to, to the shore and they come across. Now I believe that they could see the teams from the, the coastline. Now we don't know, there's no, there's so much tourism traps in Israel these days, there's so many lies, there's so many speculation and you know different records in the Talmud and different records here, different records there. I, I trust the Lord's account of, of what we've got. Now sometimes that's not very much but sometimes it's enough to either eradicate what isn't and build upon that which is. So what we have is plenty enough and we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the teacher and the Lord lays the pieces down and the Holy Spirit is there to edify, to teach. And we have the lawful points to, to put down and establish what is needful, what is, what is true, what's speculation and, and what we simply don't know. So um, I believe that uh, they could see the tombs. So, um, and when he saw come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. So now that now they they've obviously heard, and we're looking at um, hindsight here. This is this was written after the event. It's not written live as they're going. This wasn't penned in the ship, you know, and writing alongside the Lord. I don't believe, you know, that was how it was done. It was a written reaccounted by the Holy Spirit and with you know probably people helping to write it and serving the people with the responsibility to write down their witness, write down their testimony, write down their record. So the record we have here of Mark, he, he describes uh, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man of an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no not with chains, because they had had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. So we've got loads of detail about this circumstance, this man, a bit about the environment. We know there was another man with him, that there was two men. And uh, immediately he ran. So I, I personally, I believe that they could see the tomb. I, I'm not sure, uh, I can only speculate here, that uh, they may have, I don't believe that they saw him break the chains. I think that they, they heard the fame of that after, or either from the man or, or people who witnessed the count. There's obviously um, some fame about that area because people, you know, couldn't pass by without being tormented. So this may have, you know, the fame of this uh, circumstance may, may have spread around to neighbouring neighboring areas. So they might not have, I don't believe that that actually happened, but I do believe that the tombs were in sight of the shore. And he ran, he ran, look at this, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Now the devils didn't run, run to worship Jesus. And in the next line, and cried with a loud voice, and what have I to do with thee, Jesus, son of the most high? That's the demon speaking in him. Verse 6, but when Jesus, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. So we've got two things going on here. We've got the man's heart being overtaken by this legion of devils. And we living inside with this man's body and he's been robbed of his house and he's hiding in there and he's been tossed around by this demonic 
legion. Legion is a lead, it is a myriad of demonic forces. This man does not stand a chance. Something has happened to this man. And I'm gonna, I, I, I can only speculate, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk, give my thoughts. And I'm just gonna leave it on the table, invite you to consider these things and, and trust in the word of God and the Holy Spirit and 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 your ability to examine and evaluate and and, and come to a um, a, a valued um, judgment, uh, a reasoned um, evaluation and judgment of of this account, and in trust and faith to the to the Lord and the, and the Holy Scriptures alone. Um, so we've got the demons have overtaken this man, but this man's heart saw the light. He saw the Saviour coming out of the boat, and he knew that's his only hope. He 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 just knew. This man sensed. This man saw the glory of God coming, and he knew he's the only one who could help him because he ran to him. He didn't he didn't run to these people that were passing by. They were scared of him. He, he, he was just giving him, he gave up, he gave up to himself and these demons just lived in him and, and tormented the local village so they had to chain him but this supernatural power in this man could break the chains and I reckon that they, this event had not long happened. And perhaps it happened several times, perhaps they chained him several times and he escaped several times but I believe that this is the tail end of this account, this is coming to a desperation and this man sees the Lord coming out of the boat and he runs to him. And then the demons are jump over the top of him and start talking, you know, bust into the conversation. So Jesus ignores the man and he, he deals with the spirits. He casts them into the swine. Now, you can speculate that perhaps, now, because of the Lord's ministry to, was primarily like he went to Samaria now in Samaria he w he went for his seed now there the seed was corrupted because they'd apostatized in history and generations ago and they'd mixed with Gentile seed so they were paganized Jews so the Lord goes to those bloodlines he goes to those seed and he and he ministers to them and there was Gentiles there uh, but it, he, he couldn't leave his sheep even though they're mixed with other genetic abominations you know the the, the corruption of, of 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 the blood of, of of israel and their heritage you know it was all it was all in knots and frayed and because of the sins of their forefathers the sins of judah and the sins of the the tribes it, and the you know the kings it, it it's a generational problem that affected it, or the whole Jewish race and the Lord is the the remedy to that and he's come he's, he's he's addressing all these frayed ends in Israel and they're all you know they're all scattered about but they're all in one location uh, primarily but it's all mixed with um, the Roman dominance is creeping in it's the world is encroaching on on the holy city it's the the peak of it being choked to death and that's the peak where the Lord comes like that's the the same pattern we see we're going to see the same pattern at the end it's there's going to be a build up of these spiritual demonic entities because they know their time is closer and we're seeing here uh, in the Lord's min ministry this massive build up of this demonic force taking over people amongst all the genuine health conditions the the sicknesses the deep the diseases the the lunacy the normal things that naturally corrupt you to go out of your mind or or to be sick this is a, a spiritual affliction and could be connected to um physical ailments but this is primarily a demonic possession this man is completely his soul sickness is demonic he's been overtaken by these spirits doesn't say how and uh, so it's important to understand that the, the 
the Lord is orderly and he, he's only reaching out to the Jews. So my gut, my uh, on that basis, I believe that he that this man was 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 a seed, was one of the Lords, and, and this man recognised him. And we can see from verse six. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Now demons don't run and worship him. So I believe that this. This man, this this individual, recognised his his Messiah, and I believe he is a Jew in a uh, metropolis, uh, a metropolis of Roman governance. Now, maybe he was a prisoner, maybe he was a slave. I don't know. Maybe he's a sex slave. Um, you got to remember that pagan worship is blood sacrifice, and who knows of the uh, abominations and hybrids of versions of worship. We know from the gospel accounts, uh, there's so many different gods, so many different pagan gods, and so many methods of worshiping and and superstition. It was a right mix max of uh, you know a cauldron of bubble and trouble. It was a uh, terrible, terrible. It's prob you know you can in, in comparison to today's world with all the modern. Um, developments and technology, the, the 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 fracturing of everything. It's just getting so diverse and so fractured and separated from soberness and truth. And and, uh, and you can see a parallel, but in a modern, a more modern environment and stage. So I that's why I believe that he's he's Jewish, and I believe that there was Jews that perhaps owned those pigs. And that was their judgment for breaking, you know, breaking the the laws, the law that was laid down to the Jewish people, and that um, that, that that was a, a an unclean animal. It's not. It wasn't something you could eat. Uh, at that in in Jewish tradition and um, by by the um, teachings of Moses. So um, maybe that was a judgment for these people. You know, breaking the Sabbath um, and, and getting Gentiles to, to raise pigs on their behalf. I don't know, it's speculation. But I do believe that the Lord would be ministering to his seed. So there was Jews there and I, I believe this man was one of his, his sheep. And uh, the Lord went to rescue him. Now, the, now, it doesn't say about the other man. The other man could, uh, you know may have rejected Christ and he may have been of a Jew he may not have but I believe that this man is a Jew and uh, half Gentile uh, perhaps probably more than likely and uh, so the Lord, let's have a look at right now all the people now it said what befell him what verse was because all the people wanted to express to Jesus what had befell this man but it doesn't really give any details um, it's verse 16 and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine and they began to pray him to part out of their castes Right, so two things here. They they want Jesus to depart. Now they could be scared, they could be shocked, they could feel guilty and don't want to face up to themselves. But they wanted to depart. They wanted Jesus to depart. And when he was come into the ship that he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not. But said unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed, and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. So, let's have a look. So, what befell him? Now, I've, I've, I've gone into detail with that. I personally... Personally, I, I, to um, to become possessed, I think you have to you you have to experience some uh, trauma. There has to be a way that you're unable to um, stop these things getting in from the first place. Maybe it was sin. Maybe he was into 
you know, witchcraft, that sort of familiar spirits, divining, uh, summoning demons. It doesn't say, it doesn't say what his sins were. It it says what befell him. Befell him means um, circumstantial. Something happened to this this gentleman, this man. What befell him? We don't know what befell him, but we know we know from other events and a testimony today. We know of traumatized disassociation. So it could have been a childhood tragedy. It could have been this man was a vulnerable person who who was sensitive to these spiritual things, and we could see what a heart he had. And when we saw G he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. How many people in the Old Test uh, New Testament done that? That's incredible. And then, and then, you know, if you want some inspiration and motivation, and he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. So he began a ministry instantly, and this is before the gospel was preached. He, the Lord sent him out into the Gentile provinces of Israel. Um, if you look at all the cities, all, the, all these... Uh, the, Decapolis is a uh, Greek for ten cities or ten provinces, and they're all Roman, so like Roman borough councils. They're all um, organised and ordered by the Romans, and they they were uh, had their pagan worship, and that might have been an official, you know, um, a compulsory part of life. You know, that's they they all included that in their paganistic. Uh, you know establishments and orders and uh, so he was preaching the gospel in, in a way of just bearing testimony how he was this man was known to be a uh, demon possessed so I, I think he's a very vulnerable man the lord had compassion on him and sent him to lay some groundwork in the in the gentile provinces so when the gospel did come out you know he'd lay he'd, he'd planted seeds he'd laid the ground and he and it also perhaps remedied why these people couldn't face Jesus so the Lord left this man just to like you know soothe their fears a bit show the Lord how merciful and compassionate he's been unto this man and then send him on to these people so I, I believe that there's a, a scattering of seed in this this region and this guy is covering twofold he's covering the gospel to the the Jews, and he's covered, and he's preparing the the groundwork for the Gentiles, and he began. So he began his ministry, publish in Decapolis how great things. So he he could well have, when he said he, the Lord said return home. So he would have gone home, but it says he began publishing. So he probably on his way home he started telling people he knew what, and and that's the beginning, and he after the, he had a good sleep and he, he perhaps carried on going and then he planned a campaign to visit all these provinces we don't know but we know that he began to publish in Decapolis and Decapolis is 10 major provinces so that's an incredible testimony for this one man all on his own it, you know just with that testimony with that love with that completeness we have a completely shattered man to be made completely whole walking around the streets who was known to be no you know a wreck and what befell him they knew his history they knew what had befell this man so they they may they would have known him from a child they would have you know they could have you know a mixture of compassion a mixture of being sick to death of it and they knew the history of what befell this man and he went with a a testimony and laid some groundwork so after the Lord's death, burial and resurrection and, and the, the, the promise of the Holy Spirit and the gospel spread into the Gentiles we know from history that all these regions become Jordan it was like they were all Christian so that is an, um, an incredible moving testimony to think that this one person had um, quite quite a substantial role in 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 the ministry in in his own his own unique way so 
that's my synopsis that's my summary of the parenthesis um, and I think it is just such an incredibly rich rich doctrine and um, lots to wonder about lots more to learn and I think lots more to discover I've always kept this scripture on like the back boiler to really study it to see what else I can learn and I'm sure there's a lot more but that is all I can really you could, I can really squeeze out of myself so um, I think that um, there's one other really I think important area I'd like to cover and that's when he's sitting at the Lord's feet I'm not sure it's in this account um, they found him in his right mind and uh, so he was sitting at, at the Lord's feet and now so if you imagine the contrast from a lifetime of being knocked around by all these bullying spirits and then to have, be in his right mind and sober and and have a record of, of the two so now he he had a testimony of that wholeness and um, now at that time the Holy Ghost wasn't given and I don't believe this man returned into sin or f fell away I believe he he just continued on from there and and grew and then uh, and further I believe he would have after the Lord's death day or resurrection he would he would have received the Holy Spirit and uh, he would have been he would have been saved or he'd have been a pri the, the um, you know um, an overseer an elder an apostle one of one of the people that there at the scene may later well have caught up with him and uh, you know you, laid their hands on him and anointed him with the Holy Spirit and possibly, you know, um, fellowship with him and, uh, you know, joined him. Maybe he'd already established friends and um, that were, you know, that were, had a test that were, you know, repentant because of his witness and uh, later on went to receive, you know, the, the gospel and, and be saved. Uh, so he was in his right mind and uh, but we don't really get to see any other detail than, than what we've got which is which is right I think um, I do believe that uh, he has a um, if he if it wasn't for the Lord and uh, Obviously, it's completely diminished responsibility, this man. So, from a Christian perspective, from a born-again perspective, if that's something you can relate to, like, and there's another, another uh, real good clue here. Um, he was cutting himself, you know. Um, well, let's see. Verse 5, and always night and day he was in the mountains and he in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. So um, I, I've come across this in, in mental illness and uh, what they term mental illness and uh, the world's understanding in uh, care homes and residential homes and hospitals and other people on the street I, I've met with self-harm scars and uh, it's a very... Um, Unless you've kind of been in their shoes, it's a very different, difficult thing to get your head around. And um, if you do encounter someone, I think uh, you have to you have to be sensitive. Um, but you also got to be assertive and salty. And I I used to say it. I used to just be meek with people. It's wrong. You know, you're hurting yourself, you're destroying yourself. And it's a very destructive... People say, oh, it's a cry for tension. I think there's a lot more depth to it. I, I, and I, I think it is a demonic possession. And these people, and because uh, modern science doesn't believe in demons, it, it, it can teach you tools to uh, defend yourself against it, psychologically live with it, but it cannot get rid of it. It cannot get those demons out. Only Jesus Christ can bind the strong man and keep them out of your life. Um, and once they're out of your life, 
you're living in the shell or that you, you've suffered um, you know you've lived 40 years of not being getting up discipline for work and doing this you you start like a a, a, a scrapped car all in bits and then the Lord comes along and puts you in a whole car but you're still in that old scrap car if that makes sense uh, so you're kind of like both so you know you were once out of your mind out, you weren't in your right mind you have that record you have that conscience complete understanding of your what you didn't have before because before you didn't know any different now you've got this contrast the Lord has given this complete contrast but we don't know the damage this man suffered in his life hence why the Lord could have sent him away that could be another reason it could be twofold it, I cannot say one way or another except for what I've said that what, what the scripture says that he went to publish in Decapolis and the Lord had mercy on him so I believe the Lord's mercy was understandably he couldn't perhaps keep up for full time ministry or perhaps he was you know the Lord didn't want a half Jewish half Gentile mix and therefore sent him up ahead you know until he was baptised by the Holy Spirit he was completely washed in the blood of the Lamb here he was just like pre-restored he could have gone back and sinned and all those demons could have come back 10 times 20 times worse but it doesn't say that about this so I don't believe that happens that would be a negative speculation I'd rather look on a, a more realistic positive what happened by what we've got it, it gives no indication that he went wrong it's really saying that he did, he began to publish in the, the capitalist it didn't say he completed it you know the poor bloke might not have been able to carry on he might have he might have used all he, he could have done all he could have done and then struggled he become despondent we don't know it, it, it's more than likely he, he didn't have it easy um, but he had that testimony to hold him up he had the Lord to hold him up and later on I believe he was saved and um, so we've got uh, so much to consider there and he he um, I believe he would have had a, a, what, what, what you term as a, a fractured personality a, an arrested development a disassociation a traumatic shattering of the psyche and he was this man was in bits and he couldn't function without that testimony he couldn't have even if the demons would have voluntarily left him what they were they left a shell of a man you know who who wouldn't have been able to get on with his life after having that experience and contrast it would have been very difficult to build the pieces up but here the lord on a plate's give him something he's given him a life he's given him a little ministry and that's the lord's mercy now I don't believe there's anyone completely in the body of Christ that's excused from service because it's the Lord's burden. It's the I, I, I would highlight this man's life as he stayed close to his first love. He sat, he worshipped Jesus afar off. He saw Jesus afar off and he ran and worshipped him. He sat at the Lord's feet sober. He ran after the Lord into the boat. He wanted to follow the Lord to the end. You know, he wanted to go where the Lord goes. And I, I think, I think, um, I'd like to think he continued on in that vein. But I would understand and completely um, get it if he, like, you know, gave up heart a bit and you know struggled. But I don't believe that. It, I think it would have said. I think we'd have had an account if this this man went wrong. I, I believe that that kept him in good stead throughout his life, and I think he would have that would have the Lord would have used that and built upon it, and come and blessed it later on. And uh, but I, like again, I say it's speculation. So I believe there's a lot of, a lot to consider here. If you're a, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw something. 
Oh, that's I haven't got a pen. So I'm just going to pause here, run back with my pen. Oh, that was right. That was quick. <laughs> I had a pen close by. Right, so if I can... Right. Let's get that. If we think of... I can't really see what I'm doing because I'm behind the camera. If we think, pretend they're um, like scales. So we've got the... We've got the extremes here. Like I say, I'm drawing, looking at the screen. So we've got the scales can tip that way. And the scales can tip that way. Right. So you'll know so there's not two scales here, it's just one balance. But we're looking at the the extremes of the perimeters of, of the scale. So you've got the four extremes. Now this is important to, to consider. So if you look at um, Proverbs 16 verse 11, the Lord is a just balance. So the Lord's balance is obviously just. We know that level is just. So we've got the we know the scales, pans go up and down, so we know the Lord's level is straight. He's a just balance. And we're all sinners. All the weights of the bag are his works, the scripture says. All the bag, right? So if you're a, a sinner, your life, you're somewhere on one of these extremities. So if I do these little circles of souls, right? Some are up here. So there's none. There's none here. Who's just? We all we all miss that mark by a long way. But some of us are are close. Some of, some people are very sober. Some people are just on good stead from their their childhood. You know, a lot of the early disciples were. A lot of there's a lot of strong characters. Obviously flawed. Lots to learn. So. Somewhere on this, you are, before you are saved, you are somewhere on here. You're either, you know, you're either, in, let's say the bottom half is the misery. The left and right is perhaps miserable because you're a sinner. or And, and the left is miserable because you're suffering because of other sins. So we've got four corners, you see, and then there's the, you know, you, you know, that could be, you're sinning up here, you're living your high life, and boom, the next minute you're suffering the consequences. But, you know, likewise, you know, that you could be beating up people, being really evil and really nasty, and then, then the consequences are boom. And then if you're really nasty, some of your children could end up oh, really depressed and unhappy. So we're all somewhere on here, on the scale. So when the Lord heals them, Right, so if you're at this extreme down here, and then suddenly, um, you know, suddenly you find, you know, you're complete, and then, you know, before you're all in, like, bits, you've been shattered, you've been smashed like an eggshell, and all your bits are on the floor, and then the, then the next minute you're there. But imagine if you're not in bits and then you're saved. So the saved soul, so there's the Saviour's grace, the wholeness, the completeness, the love, the healing, the mercy, knowing the love of God. And then your, your life's in bits. You know, in there, the Lord's holding you in bits. But you're still those bits. You're still that past sinner. You're still that redeemed sinner by grace. But you still have those. Let's say you were born paralysed. And you're outside the Lord's ministry after Pentecost. And then you come to know, call upon the Saviour. He saves you. How many saved people started walking when they called upon the Lord? I don't know any. Because we live in, it's a season of we live by faith. And, you know, not by not by knowledge, not by a complete knowledge. We have faith in that complete knowledge. But that complete knowledge is not with us. We have a testimony of that complete knowledge. 
so we will remain that broken pieces and if we fall out of fellowship and we're in that state we're very vulnerable and if we're saved we're not going to get um, repossessed but we could get seriously oppressed and the devil could sort of you know you could cuss you could get angry you could hurt you could you know you could even get in a situation where you murder somebody or man uh, you know commit manslaughter it's not beyond a saved person to sin it, it's just um not un <laughs> uncommon to uh, to go and sin that extremely i think there has to be a mitigating or a, there has to be a reason for what something going wrong but being safe doesn't heal you in a physical sense although you can gain knowledge to help improve your physical circumstances you can uh, in, you know make a, make changes make improvements and and that fruit and knowledge and light could bring healing but that I believe that this man would have always had a propensity to um, his past difficulties his past trauma his past um, what befell him and I think that also the Lord was aware of so I think the Lord's doing a lot more in this man than that I can understand at this moment. But from my own life, um, with, with legions and uh, demons and demon possession and all um, disassociation, trauma-based disassociation, I think it has strong links to satanic worship. I think this man perhaps was cursed, generationally cursed, could be into like what King Solomon was into, David's son, he apostatized and learned, he, he, he went into all the mystery, you know, all the turning, all, all the truth, all that wisdom into darkness, into mystery and um, polluting it and and it turned it into abomination and the consequences of those sins were secret worshipping hiding it away from the Lord living a lie and the consequences of that was just giving birth to all this evil and wickedness taking root in people's lives and of course the children growing up and that are the sufferers they're the fruit of it and then it continues and uh, this uh, practice was you know this was a, the most demonically possessed man we have a record of. There must have been something so extreme for that man to be able to get into that state. So I believe this man was a traumatised, disassociated, smashed little lamb with, you know, a little, a little seed of Israel that could have got caught up in... He could have just been vulnerable to the environment he lived in. It might not have been direct pagan, like he experienced ritual sacrifices. It could well have been. It could have been just the fact that he was pushed out and isolated in a, a wealthy place and he was vulnerable and he got just sucked up by it because no one was caring for him. He just had a vulnerability and, and all these legions exploited that and tossed this man and pushed him out into the outskirts of this town down by the, the coastline of the Sea of Galilee into the tombs and uh, so I think there is some positive association if you do the history if you, if you look at the spiritual side the, the rightness of sin and wickedness and these demonic manifestations this was a biggie this was a big a iniquitous mountain arising in this town of, so what was being practiced in that town is the question well we know it's iniquity it's sin and this is one of the fruits and this 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 is what befell that man 
it doesn't say that, but this is what befell that man. That through those consequences of what was going on in that village. And this man was a victim of that. It befell him. I don't think he went and asked for it, so it befell him. Maybe the consequences befell him. But I think it was more of a consequence of him being a vulnerable adult, a vulnerable man, a young, vulnerable young person. And he just got... He, he just ended up on the end of this. And the Lord was merciful and recognised that, singled him out and went for him. And he was one of the Lord's seed. So I'd like to leave that with people to consider. So that's, um, I'd like to encourage people to study the uh, parenthesis of the uh, of the Gospels and um, look more deeply in, in, into these areas that you find that you perhaps perhaps relate to and um, continue studying to um, get more of an understanding to seek the Lord's will to ask him to open things up to you for your own growth, your own sanctification and walk and your own understanding um, it, there's always that scripture that says work out thy salvation with fear and trembling and, and, and we, when we first call upon the Lord, we, we go in trepidation and fear. I did. It was like fear and trembling in one sense, but also there was a spirit of light and joy and, you know, drawing, drawing. So, um, working out your salvation. Well, I think that's twofold. That's becoming, knowing you're saved, calling upon the Lord and tasting the fruit of the Holy Spirit is not necessarily knowing you're saved. It, it's the Holy Spirit, say, the Lord saving you, but it doesn't, the baptism of the, of the fire of the Holy Spirit, you don't know you're saved until you, you establish that in the, in the Word. You need to study the Word to, to get the confirmation of what the Spirit, the Lord's given you. The promise you've received, you need that, that faithful record to have a lawful witness of you are saved because you've it's the Lord and it's the Lord that's written down what's just you've just received and that's that's like finding yourself approved. That's like no working out your salvation with fear and trembling. But it goes a lot deeper than that. You know, it goes beyond that because we we we've all got family history. We've got a family history of sin. That could be addiction. That could be curses. It's such a such a complicated. You see on the scale, it could such a complex. Human souls are so finely tuned, like you know, um, finely tuned. You know, they're, they're too more complicated than anything that man could build. I I, I think they're just. Um, marvelous to like um learn and learn about uh, everything about the human race you know that's what I, the lord says to be thankful for all men and thankful for his creation and and we um learn things about ourselves from from the uh people's experiences in the scriptures and and it's very difficult when you're one of those people who've experienced something that no one else is going to understand because they've they've not really had had that experience in their lives you can't expect them to understand that's why we all have the rock we all have christ and i think working out your own salvation with fear, fear and trembling that is inclusive within that because it's your life is what's been worked out and what's been worked out is what you've been safe from and what you've been safe from is sin and that's your genetic inheritance that's your uh, environmental circumstances and all the impression that had on you that's that's your what you've been safe from and then that can be turned around once you've received that completeness, that gives you an understanding of perhaps where you, where you will areas where you will minister. So he was a ministering in a, in, a, in the environment he was taken out from, but now he's complete, 
now he could, perhaps he could go and deal with all those things he would have an understanding of all those things because his salvation has been worked out and the Lord's made him whole and the Lord's given the, the, him this sober perspective that nobody else has got who, who isn't saved and he, he could have um, the Lord could have blessed him to do more, you know the Lord could have used him and the Holy Spirit could have done marvellous things around him by by the Lord's grace, by the Lord's just saying, look, go go into my town, you're going to have an impression, you're going to have a big impact in there, and the Holy Spirit's going to go, convict, convict, yes, 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 he, that was the Messiah, we shouldn't have been frightened, and we were guilty, you know, that could have, that would have divided, that, the Lord put him there to have an effect on the table, uh, and like I say, we, we, we can speculate, so there's a lot to do with, working out your salvation in, in this part of the scripture I believe and how the Lord works your salvation out and converts you to be of service and and this to me is looking at it further I, I really overlooked this part really of the I didn't quite see it through I was getting wrapped on in, in my own difficulties and I overlooked the seeing through the to the completion of what this this man just went on to do and i think that that gives great hope for people who've had a real extreme in, un, un, in, incomprehensible experience that they don't feel that there's many people on this earth that they can relate to Let me, i'm just gonna end up with a scripture and it's uh, probably one of those scriptures that um I related to so much and it and it's um a messianic scripture it's a um it, it's a holy it's the lord's holy the lord's spirit speaking through the circ the similar circumstances to david's heart and life so it's david speaking of what the lord's the lord's uh, working through david's life what the lord is eventually going to experience so the Lord, um, David here is, it's a psalm of empathy, if you like. It's a psalm of the Lord's Spirit working through David. Um, it is a, I can't, now, I can't remember the number of the scripture, so I'm going to have to quickly flip through. But it's uh, one of those scriptures. Um, I think it's one two seven. No. Uh, I hope I'm not fiddling around to find it, and uh, I can't find it. Here we go. One four two. That's it. Okay. Psalm one four two. Uh, right. So David's praying here. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him, I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way where, wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me? So David, you know, the, you can see the, the parallels here. David, this is David experience, saying the same thing the Lord's going to later experience. He laid a snare for me. I looked on the right hand and beheld but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me, no man cared for my soul. Now, we can all relate to that. And p particularly when um, you've experienced something that no one else, that you can tell people and it just goes over their head, you know that you, you've got a king, you've got like David, King David had a king. So we've got two kings here. And we have a king, we have two kings here, you know, David's our, our brother, our, our, and he's a, he, he was a king. And he's experiencing this l loneliness. He's all on his own here, he's got no one to relate to. Just like Christ, he had no one on this earth that could relate to him. Nobody, nobody could come near to understanding. Look at Gethsemane, nobody grasped what the Lord was suffering, these were babies, these were children, oh sleep on my children, he said, you know, sleep on now, 
I looked on my right hand and beheld, but then there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me, no man cared for my soul. I cried unto the Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver, deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteousness shall come past me, for thou shalt deal bountifully, bountifully, bountifully with me, bountifully with me. So we see that David was at the the bottom end there. He was hitting the ditch, and and if we if you read on, David's going to be lifted out, praising the Lord in his next breath. He's at the he's just sharing that. Um, probably a glimpse into Gethsemane, a glimpse onto the cross. We're looking at um, those times in our life we've got no one to turn to, and but, but we know as brothers and sisters in Christ, we always have the Lord with us to turn to, that, that first love, that completeness. So if anybody has strayed from their first love or their com that completeness, I'd like just like to encourage you, the Lord understands you. And all it, all it takes, what's keeping you away from that, that love and understanding is just your, a prayer. You just have to confess and, and you're back in fellowship. The Lord's bound and um, he wants you to grow. He wants you to, uh, he's got things he wants you, you don't understand. He wants to bless you, that you can be a blessing to him. Because that's the Lord's joy, joy. he's purchased us with his property and he loved us so therefore we should uh, love him and and do that which is his burden and that's to his the first love is to preach the gospel to share that love because he's jealous that all men would be saved otherwise he it, it it's a no-no because he died for all men without question and that's his burden that's his burden alone and if you've received that and 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 you were that burden and now you're not that burden you become his burden or you share in his burden you've taken up the plow and this like everybody has something to uh the Lord has something in mind in ministry for everybody and so I want to leave that to consider that people perhaps don't know what they can do for the Lord or perhaps stop doing what they should be doing and and I pray that that would be perhaps an encouragement perhaps a more gentle understanding um, but even this man, he, he puts a lot of people to shame. He puts me to shame. He uh, Honestly, this, this man has put me to shame. Um, I can see my heart there. I can see that I, I've um, shared my, my testimony, but I've had a lot of, um, a lot of hiccups, a lot of setbacks, and um, a lot of knockbacks, and I've uh, fallen into a lot of pitfalls. And I want to really, part of, my ministry I want to I want to lay things down so people will avoid the pitfalls I fell into avoid getting hammered avoid getting you know tossed around so much more unnecessarily so and not being able to kind of get back on your feet you know once you've been picked up and then you fall fall down sometimes like a ladybug it's stuck on its back and it can't get up it needs sometimes the Lord will be the sole one to do that I've had that in my life no one's been there for me no man cared for my soul only Jesus cared for my soul I can't expect every man to care for my soul 100% of the time because he's man because we have a God and we have a jealous God and um, sometimes you need uh, fellowship you need a brother you need understanding but if that if you're in one of those brackets where there's no no one who can really understand you and it, you know how however much their hearts want to understand you um you know that you have that you have the lord you have that um that completeness and you have that understanding and, and that understanding is yours alone to discover and i think that's such a part of um 
working out your salvation well what it is you've been safe from alcoholism addiction that's going to give you some understanding to benefit another person therefore that's equipping you for ministry and testimony that's that's a tar that's an area where you have an expertise or some knowledge where you can reach out to and touch somebody you you know you can go beyond where other people perhaps could dare to tread you know oh i don't know how to you know you know imagine if you you're a man or a, a woman who or a young as a young child you were abused sexually you know that's a very difficult if you is that if that's not a an experience you've ever experienced that's a very difficult subject to you're going to be putting your foot in it and you don't you don't want to be insensitive you know the lord's equipping he's equipped he's equipped all of us with a, a gift to to go on and minister so i want to encourage people to consider you know and be remember the your first love and and to be um to encourage anyone who's struggling to you know uh, take the Lord's hand and uh, seek the Lord's heart and face and, and be picked up and and continue to go and to keep going to, to seek more understanding if it's something you're struggling to find if you're str looking for someone to relate to some understanding or someone to turn to turn to the Lord and seek his understanding and I just and I'm putting this out there in faith is to perhaps be a advert for that a little a little signpost to christ for that on your behalf on his behalf for you or anybody that's struggling um so that's my synopsis complete and i hope this has been a blessing to you and i am going to close now with with thanks and appreciation to the lord for you know the the mercy he's shown me in my life and the teachings and the obstacles and hurdles I've had to overcome and the countless times he's 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 always concerned of my concerns and I am seeking to sustain a nearness to my saviour on a daily basis more so than I have in the past and I'd like to encourage people just to keep going and and, and to look up and and be thankful and and be glad that you you are safe and you know the Lord and that you do have a you have a you you're a precious person you're a precious child a precious son or daughter of Christ and you have a you have great things to give um for the Lord you, the Lord's um valued you at some something you don't value yourself at something you don't understand how to value until you're face to face with him and he loves you and he's got a blessing for you to do he's got a work for you to experience and rejoicing and it's very sad to think that when the lord comes as it says there's going to be a very few that are in faith you know and we're nearing that time you know what how many's few it's a few five is a few one hundred is it a thousand a few a few thousand i think it's disappointing to say the least whatever the real figure is so what can be done about it what are the reasons for that so i can only address the few I hope to be one of those few. I hope to, if it's not the time of the Lord, I hope to end my life that way. You know, to be considered in the bracket of the few if I was around at that time. So this is an encouragement to, with both hands and with realistic expectations and without presumption, to seek the blessings of service, what you can do for the lord not before you can run not before you can recover but what is what is because that could be part of your recovery working it out is what or where you're going to take what you're working out forward um you may have worked that out you have worked that out because the lord gives you it bang it's free but th there comes times where you are shaken from that and you have it makes you look then it makes you look at what's been working out and that's how you're going along your life with that but you've always got that complete at your side always and that will hold you up daily 
even when certain times where you're not looking for that, that is still holding you up and sometimes you not appreciating, appreciating what the Lord's done for you enough because you can't because you're uh, you were born lost and blind you have to learn to appreciate it is what we've been given and there's so much wisdom in the Lord you know like learning something new for the first time for yourself is it is a golden gift you can't put a price on you know, life is you can't put a price on. Who can put pull? Who can put the legs back on a spider? Really, you know, we we are we are very blessed. So I, I hope this has been a an encouragement, a blessing, and a comfort, and and an encouragement to to be of service. We're living in a a time where there's um, many souls that are lost that need saving, and uh, many areas many areas of work there's there's a dearth of laborers there's a dearth of disciples and i hope to i hope this is an encouragement to someone to take the ball by the horns no matter how weak you are and just go and do the little things for the lord go and tell the lord in your in your local area how merciful the lord's been to you that the lord saved you just because you you believed and give your testimony in whatever small way you can and i think that by that doing those things that you you remain close to the lord and you remain growing in that understanding you've been blessed with and um i'm going to close there and uh in the name of our lord jesus christ amen